What's up team? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about surround sound system and how to set it up. So we made a video a few weeks ago about the Dolby Atmos that I set up in my apartment. And a lot of people asked us, how do you set it up? Like, how do you put the cables? How do you run the cables? You know, what do I need? What, how does it all work? How do I get from, you know, just bare equipment to a full setup? So today I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Let's get started. Just to recap, what exactly is a Dolby Atmos surround sound setup? Well, it's when you have seven surround sound speakers. Usually you have five going around. In a Dolby Atmos system, you have two extra ones up on top of you so you can hear stuff coming from on top of you. Helicopters, rain, whatever it might be in your game or your movie that you're watching that's coming from above, you can hear it. So as you can see here, I've got my two front speakers. I've got my center channel speaker. I've got two surround sound speakers, lower in the back, left and right, and two left and right up top. Okay, so that's what we have. And then we have our subwoofer here in the corner. That's a downward firing sub. And then we have our um, stereo or our receiver, okay? So, so the important thing is when you buy a receiver for an Atmos setup, you wanna make sure that it's a 7.1 or 7.2 receiver because that means it can actually support seven speakers. Some speakers don't have enough plugs for seven speakers. They usually have five. So you gotta make sure you get a 7.1 or 7.2. Um, the seven in that number stands for how many surround sound speakers you have and the 0.1 is like for one subwoofer or 0.2 for two subwoofers. Let's get started. So what I got here is the SCR DH790 Sony. It's probably the cheapest and best quality um, at the price point for a Atmos setup. And then what you need to do is you need to get your speakers. You can watch my other video to look at what speakers I got and etc. And then you need to buy cable. So you want to get 14 gauge cable. The lower the number, the thicker the cable is. So it's a little counterintuitive, but the thicker the cable typically, the more power it can handle and the better quality it's gonna be. Get your cable. Usually you wanna get more cable than what you expect to use. Probably needed like 200 feet of cable for this. This is a 200 square foot room. It's about 10 feet from this wall to over there. So running these cables, it's 10 feet away, but the cable has to go down, then it has to go somewhere, and then it has to go somewhere. Somewhere. So it actually probably took about 15 to 20 feet of cable to get from that speaker to the receiver. And for these, it took even more because that's an eight foot high ceiling. So that's about 20 feet, 20, 25, 30 feet of cable to get that routed out to the speaker. So that's something to consider. Always have an overestimate. And when you cut your cables, cut them longer than you think you need them because you can't uncut something. So just cut longer and then shorten it if you need to shorten it. The way the routing of the cables work and what to think about is which speaker you're trying to set up and what your environment looks like. For me, I have a couch here with a speaker right on the side of the couch and then I have a big rug. So what I did was I got these stands which have a hole here. The speaker cables come out of this hole up into the speaker here and I mounted my speaker here. This one uses a keyhole mount. So basically it's like this. You can either screw the screw all the way in or you put it on the screw like a keyhole and it'll be good. It also has, if you have bigger speakers, you can actually screw it in from the bottom, but this works fine for me. Then the cable goes all the way down into this um, stand and comes out the bottom here. And you can see I have some tape. Um, I think I can show you, it comes out right there. So the speaker cable comes out of the pole underneath and I've taped it. So you don't see it at all because I hide it like that. And that's basically it. This is an adjustable height, so I can adjust the height of this. But this is my ear level, so that's why it's at this height. And yeah, that's pretty much all there's to it. All I did was tape, run it under the couch, run it under the rug here. I have a rug pad underneath of this rug, which helps you not feel the cable when you're walking here. So it's a rug pad. It's like a cushion for underneath of your rug. Yeah, so if you come here, so as you can see here, I'm gonna show you underneath of my rug how I routed the cables. So this is the rug pad and that's the cable so I tape it up here have the cables going underneath I have two different kinds of cable as you can see I've taped it down and then I cover that with a rug pad and then cover that with my rug you tape it because well I taped it so it doesn't move around underneath and it stays flat and then when you're here you don't really feel it at all between the rug pad and the rug so as you can see that cable gets routed going around this here and then it comes out here 
So I can cover that. I could probably do a little better cable management, but honestly, it's not noticeable. We have this cardboard here because we have rabbits. As you can see, we have some rabbit stuff here. We use the cardboard there to stop the rabbits from getting to the cables because they, they like to eat cables for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so now pretty much the same thing for the for the front speakers here. I have my you know TV cabinet. I have the cables, as you can see, coming out the back, and they just go there into the stereo from behind the cabinet. So that's pretty simple. As for my subwoofer, all I do have to plug in for this is the power cable, which I believe is right here. Uh, I've also taped it up and ran a little cable hider channel here. Goes under the rug, comes out, goes around the back. These cables coming from this side. So I have speaker cables coming from the back, going all the way out here, and then all these ethernet, Wi-Fi plugs and stuff. All those cables are coming out. They go around here, they go around back. That's where they go. And for the subwoofer, it's a wireless sub. So I don't actually need a speaker cable going from the sub to the receiver. I just need to plug the sub into an outlet. So the sub could live anywhere. And now that we're speaking of the sub, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how to set it up or pick a location for yourself. There's plenty of great videos out there for that. But basically, it's really important where you put your sub because it determines how good the sound and how effective the sound of the subwoofer is gonna be. If you put it in a corner, it tends to be a little bit better sounding because it kind of vibrates or bounces off the walls and goes to you. If you just put it in the middle of nowhere, not going to be that effective. Basically, the best way to figure out where to put your sub is this thing is called the subwoofer crawl. And basically what you do is you put your subwoofer where you would be sitting and then you kind of turn it on. You can find some bass music or subwoofer testing video on YouTube. Play that, the subwoofer, you can just go basically crawl, but just put your ear close to the ground in different places. This is where you might be able to put your sub and see which area sounds the best. So my subwoofer would be here. I would have something playing, testing the sub, and I'll be putting my ear down in different places where I might be able to put my sub in the best sounding one, I put it there. You can't put your sub anywhere. So like if the best sounding place is like right in the middle of your kitchen, you know, it doesn't matter because you can't put your sub there. So put it there, test out the different places you want to put your sub, the best sounding one. Take your sub from there, put it where it sounded good, and you're good to go. Now you might be wondering, the ceiling speakers, how does that work? Because that's probably gonna be your biggest challenge when it comes to setting up an Atmo system in your apartment, right? Because you can't put the speakers in the ceiling. And you really don't wanna have them on the ceiling, actually. It's kind of hard to install, hard to fix the holes and everything. It's better if it's on the wall somewhere. So what I did was I put my two height channel speakers up above this curtain rod where I have my curtains. Basically works the same as being directly on top of you because they're pointed down and they're right on top of where you would be sitting. Sound doesn't necessarily travel in a very straight line. You know, it goes out conically. There's a calibration tool that usually comes with your receiver. And what you do is you plug a mic in to your receiver and you put it where you would be sitting. Then the receiver plays a whole bunch of crazy sounds to see where the speakers are located and what direction the sound is going and whatnot. And it calibrates the settings so that you have the optimal sound from where you're sitting. You know, if they were pointed more down, like on top of me, it would be calibrated different. But because they're kind of going this way, they're probably a little bit louder so that you can hear it properly when you're sitting here. Stuff like that, it compensates. So don't worry too much about whether it's directly facing down or whatever, this works just fine. So what I did here, um, I have these mounts. They're linked in the description and also in the other video um, that I made, like ball mounts. I can show you, hold on. So there's these 360 degree mounts. And then I have the cables coming out of the back of the speaker here. As you can see, cables come out of there and run down the side of this window and it's covered by the curtains. So since the curtain is always there, Basically, since the curtain is always gonna be closed, covering it, or open and it's still gonna be covering it, you never really see that cable. And it, it's just a perfect location. The great thing is for this solution, you don't need to you know, hide the cables in the walls and you don't really need to use a lot of cable hiders. You know, those cable channels, like the one that I have over there. Usually you might find that you're putting tons of these cable hiders by the molding to hide your cables. But if you have curtains and you hide it behind the curtain and it goes behind the couch and then it goes under the rug, I mean, it's super easy. You don't have to hide your cables and you need minimal cable channels to hide them. So basically, I routed those cables for the top two speakers. They come down and then they meet up with the other back speakers that are here at the lower level. Go under the rug, come around here, feet into the back area where I plug everything in and 
to this receiver. So the way you set up your cables is you plug them into the back of your receiver. In the back of the receiver, you're gonna see left, right, you know, front left, rear left, rear right, you know, all the different. So the way you're gonna to wanna to set this up is you're gonna to have to plug everything into the back of your receiver, all your audio cables. And on the back of the receiver, you're gonna see these little quirks holes. Usually they have a little screw thing. And you're gonna plug your cables into those. They're labeled front left, front right, center channel, you know, rear left, rear right, top, uh, high channel speakers, if you have the 7.1. So what you wanna do is when you're routing your cables you want to mark it or something to be able to know which cable is which because you're gonna route all these cables here the other thing you could do instead of marking it is you could do it one at a time like when you put the cables into the back speaker you run the cable all the way here and then you plug it in right away that way you don't mix up which cables are which it would be a total nightmare <laughs> if you accidentally unplug your cables and they're not marked and then they all get mixed up you're gonna have no idea which cable is which because they all just come out from here of course, you know, it'll take some time for you to figure it out, but save yourself that extra work and just keep track of the cables by marking them or something like that. You can use some masking tape and then write on the masking tape at the end of the cable. That way you'll always be able to know which one it is. The way the cables work, basically you have a cable. It's got some plastic on the outside. You have to strip off that plastic. You can use scissors or something, just cut around it. They have special tools that you can buy from Best Buy that strip the end of the cable off. You strip off the end of the cable, it exposes the copper wire you I twist up the copper wire and then I put it into the hole in the port for the back of the stereo you know stick it in there screw it up and that's good to go that's pretty much all there is to it this is pretty simple just to recap first thing you want to do is you want to figure out where you want to put your speakers so think about it like do I want to put it here there wherever you know second thing is buy your mounts and your stands do your research it's pretty easy to mount these into drywall you just screw a hole or you drill a hole you put a drywall anchor, it's like a screw, but it's plastic. And then you put the thing up there and you screw the screws in and that's it. That's super simple, it takes like five minutes. You put your speaker up there, put the cables inside already, run your cables down. So put all your speakers in place, put the cables in, run the cables all the way up to here, plug everything into your stereo. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you've got everything hooked up, all you need to do is plug in the mic or the calibration, go into your stereos or your receivers menu, go to calibration or whatever you gotta do, look it up on Google. And let it calibrate it'll do its thing and you're done then go to your tv settings or your xbox settings set everything to dolby atmos or dolby digital whatever uh dynamic and you're gonna have atmos everywhere you go you're gonna have it on your movies your tv shows your video games anything that supports atmos you're good to go once you have your atmos system set up you know as far as the speakers are concerned you're also going to need to worry about what types of devices platforms support atmos because not everything supports atmos even if a show is Atmos enabled or whatever, is filmed in Atmos, streaming platform might not support it. For example, your smart TV might not actually output Atmos. So you would need to get an Xbox or for us, we also have to get a Amazon Fire Stick, as you can see right here. It's an Amazon Plus Prime something. It's like the 4K stick that they have and it supports Atmos. So just double check that it supports Atmos um, because HBO Max doesn't come out in Atmos from Xbox or the TV. TV, but it does with the Amazon Fire Stick. So for us to watch HBO Max in Atmos, we need to use Fire Stick. Like I said, it varies from platform to platform. Just make sure you do your research and see which of these devices support the shows that you enjoy watching. If you have any other questions, hopefully I covered everything. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's not very complicated. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video and you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe. It makes us very happy. Very, very happy. All right, <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Bye. No.